Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and managing partner of SkilledWorker.com. The topic of today's live stream is going to be Canada's immigration levels. So yesterday, Colin, the government re they released their federal immigration levels and for the first time in a long time, uh, we're forecasting for actually three years. So. Uh, before we get started, should we just briefly discuss Quebec? Um, sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I mean, Quebec is slightly has its own separate uh, level. So, so what does this mean for Quebec? Well, uh, interestingly enough, Quebec came out with their annual uh, level last uh, week. So they published uh, their 2018 target level uh, for the different categories they're looking for. Interesting that Quebec has its own uh, stream uh, among all the provinces. Quebec has what we would say is a, a unique relationship in terms of how they go about um, managing their immigration programs. So Quebec accounts for about 17 percent of Canada's overall levels okay. and they have what we uh, generally describe as their own separate stream. So Quebec will bring in uh, around 50,000 per year. Okay. Uh, they came out last week with their projected numbers. Uh, and what we're seeing is pretty much a, a consistent level for the next year. Uh, it's consistent with the last uh, few years. Uh, so they're bringing in, uh, they're looking to bring in approximately 50,000. Uh, and the increase is, is really negligible in terms of uh, what Quebec is going to be bringing in as an increase. We're not really seeing that much of an increase. Okay. Uh, I think what Quebec is looking to do is hold things steady, okay. uh, get through their fairly large inventory. And that's been a problem for many applicants to Quebec, is the delays to process an application have been uh, unmanageably high. Uh, so I think what Quebec is trying to do is uh, get a handle on its inventory, keep the numbers relatively stable, um, and uh, Quebec will be looking to bring in, as I said earlier, approximately 50,000 uh, immigrants uh, in 2018. What we'll also see for Quebec uh, is they're moving towards an expression of interest. So they're going to create uh, a similar a paradigm that exists on the federal side. Okay, great. So I guess we'll move on to the federal level. So, I mean, as we've seen, and all this can be found on our website in the news section, so we'll go into further detail in the news section as well. You can see the articles, all the figures are gone through in, in great detail. Right, we put together a nice piece that gives good perspective on the Quebec uh, plan for 2018. Right. You'll find it in the uh, October news articles on our website. Perfect, great. So for the federal, I mean, Canada's expecting, I mean, we're targeting almost one million immigrants over the next three years. So what are some of the figures? Well, I interesting is that for the first time in decades, uh, the federal government has put out a three-year plan on what they'd like to see as the targeted levels. Uh, and, you know, keeping in mind that before the Liberal government came to power in 2015, uh, we traditionally had about 250,000, 260,000 immigrants per year. And that was the number that was for decades. So even back as far as the early 1990s, Canada was bringing in approximately 250,000 per year. Fast forward that to 2014, 2015, we had in the area of 260. Um, <clears throat> when the federal government came into power at current levels, uh, they moved that bar up by 40,000. So they moved that up to 300,000. So for the first time, we've now started using language which is called 300,000 per year. Okay. We've seen that again for 2017. And the three-year plan looking forward for three years, 18, 2019, and 2020, by the time they're all done in 2020, they're looking to bring in approximately 350,000 immigrants per year. The ramp up starts modestly in 2018, next year. Okay. There's a slight increase of 10,000 going to 310,000. The second year of this plan, it really moves up significantly by 20,000 per year to 330,000. And then by the third year of this plan, they're bumping it up ever so slightly to 340,000. Most of this, of course, Canada's looking for predominantly economic class. So there, we're looking at a 60-40 split. Okay. Uh, and we've seen 
the economic class also go up uh, over the three-year period. You see a, a gradual increase that's commensurate with the uh, annual levels moving up. You'll see those numbers moving up overall economic class. You'll see the high-skilled express entry category moving up as well. Uh, bear in mind, uh, everything has to be done in a lock stock. Everything has to be done uh, so that the numbers all are proportionate. Uh, I think the big, yeah, go ahead. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, there were interest groups. I mean, you're discussing that the numbers are going up. Interest groups actually wanted even higher levels. However, the government I mean, they looked at everything, and they wanted. I mean, integration is key. That's so they it. do want the new the new immigrants to be able to find skilled work or work in their field. And they all. I mean, Canada, we have amazing settlement services, but obviously, this has all been thought through just so it works out best on for everyone, for both the immigrant and for Canada. Well, that's it. Uh, you know, there were interest groups that were looking to raise the bar much higher, um, but obviously, integration uh, is really the important takeaway. Uh, economic integration is really the goal for for everyone, uh, and and so it, it you know the message we're hearing is that these are the numbers the government feels that they have the resources to deliver on, right. um, not to to over you know over exaggerate uh, the levels uh, because of, of course it's a matter of having the resources in place, and then having the ability to track all of these numbers and make sure that people are settling successfully. Now, right. you know, you're seeing where are these numbers coming from. Uh, what you could probably see from these numbers on the negative side right. is that the caregiver category is one that is really going to be the bearing the brunt of all of these numbers. Um, because when the government came into power, we had uh, the annual levels <clears throat> provided for 22,000. Uh, caregivers uh, under this program that used to exist. Um, so you've seen a steady decline of 22,000 in 2016. This year it went, it, it, the forecast is 18,000 caregivers. Now caregivers are those who are coming to Canada under a work program in which there was an automatic pathway to Canadian permanent residence. Right. So this particular grouping uh, of individuals uh, are part of the economic, they're considered as part of the economic uh, category. But if you take a look at the numbers in terms of going three years forward, this year's 18,000 of caregivers goes to 17 next year, 14 in year two, and finally in year three it's down to 5,000. And what all this really tells to most uh, people in the field, we all know there's a big backlog of caregivers who've been applying for permanent residence and once all and the rules change quite dramatically uh, so that you no longer have an automatic pathway to Canadian residence if you come into Canada uh, under the caregiver uh, stream. Okay. Uh, you're able to get a work permit yeah. and, and it will be very difficult for many uh, caregivers to transition to Canadian permanent residence. They'll have to qualify under the normal stream or under a provincial program. So right. a lot of the numbers that we're seeing in terms of increasing on the provincial uh, category, increasing the economic class, uh, you're seeing uh, some of those numbers coming from uh, the caregiver stream. Okay, and what about students? I mean, obviously we've seen with the Federal Skilled Worker Program, having Canadian education does get you more points, Canadian experience, you know, there, we have many temporary workers here too with Canadian work experience so obviously some of that would factor into some of those numbers as well. Well I, I think that's right. Uh, I think to, to a large extent what we're seeing is there's a, a big pool of students in Canada, a growing pool and that's upwards of 400,000 per year. You're also looking at, those are, those are considered temporary residents. Uh, the government knows that uh, there's a, a large pool of temporary residents who theoretically uh, would be ideal candidates to apply for permanent residence. Uh, knowing that it's a challenge to keep students here uh, for a number of reasons, but the goal here is to bring in permanent residents who are in one of the temporary residence streams. So right. the non-permanent residents, the temporary workers, there is a growing number as well. You're looking at upwards also of 400,000 temporary workers in Canada who can theoretically apply for Canadian residence under one of the programs 
and the pathway to Canadian permanent residence for a foreign worker or for a, for a student uh, is, is quite uh, reasonable. So the government's hope is that they'll be able to increase the overall levels with the thought that a lot of these people could theoretically come from individuals who are already integrated in Canada, already familiar with working, studying, uh, and are, have built good ties. So if you're looking to immigrate to Canada, uh, obviously having a job is one way to do it. Yeah. Having uh, a study uh, history is another way. Yeah. But there is room for a lot of people yeah. who have no prior ties to Canada. So these are the general metrics. Right. So, I mean, I guess, what can we... Well, I have another okay. interesting observation, is that uh, what, I, what we've noticed <clears throat> from these numbers is that the business stream is not getting a lot of attention. Um, if we take a look at how many business candidates, and that includes applicants and dependents, it's just a stagnant, stable number of 700 individuals per year. Um, <clears throat> sorry, what that tells us is that obviously the government is uh, not giving a resource and direction to bringing in and developing a strong business stream. Now, we do have a number of uh, programs, pilot projects, uh, we've talked about uh, the difficulties for business applicants to Canada finding a good pathway to Canada. Uh, we, we covered that in our last live stream. But if you take a look at these levels, you're not seeing much attention to business immigrants. That's surprising given uh, the innovation uh, and the, the, the track record that some business candidates represent to Canada and as well as the studies that have been done. So we're kind of puzzled. Uh, now, if you look at the Quebec levels, uh, they too have kept their numbers fairly, uh, fairly stable. And in fact, the majority of business candidates to Canada, if you look at Quebec's annual level for next year, uh, they're keeping it consistent. It's around the 4,000 to 6,000 range. But when you, when you look at the federal government's levels uh, at 700 per year, uh, what that tells you is Quebec is the driver of business immigration to Canada um, <clears throat> and, and there doesn't seem to be an interest at this time uh, or for the next foreseeable future where business immigrants to Canada are going to have uh, a strong interest uh, for the federal government. So th those are the main uh, takeaways that we uh, have seen. Uh, another observation is, is the parents, you know, the family class. Uh, you do see uh, a steady increase in the numbers uh, on the annual levels. You've got uh, a nice steady increase. That's proportionate to the overall levels that they're trying to increase. Uh, the parent and grandparent stream is not changing very much. It's, uh, it's in the 20,000 range. It stays pretty stable uh, over the next three years. Refugees moves up a little bit. Um, and I think overall what we're seeing, and I guess the, the major takeaway is that by the end of this three-year plan, you're, you're moving, we, the government of Canada is moving nearer to an annual level of 350,000 immigrants per year. It, it, it won't be quite at that level, but it won't be far off. So the next big barrier hitting 300 uh, with this government in 2016, uh, 2017, again, annual levels 300,000. Moving upwards from here, we're looking at uh, perhaps knocking on the door at 350,000. Again, that's in three, three, four years away. And, and the, the reason for a, a robust immigration program is the economy. It's right. our demographics, it's our labor market. Uh, all of the figures show that uh, Canada needs uh, a fairly uh, robust immigration program, not as the only tool, but as an important tool uh, in solving many of the demographic challenges it faces. Right. So, I mean, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, so, we, I mean, we do have an article on both Quebec and on the federal immigration level. So it is in the news section of our website. So for November 1st, uh, if, if interested readers would like to go into the details of this uh, presentation today, 
uh, that particular topic is well covered yes. uh, on our site uh, for that particular article. Right. I mean, obviously, we keep you up to date on our social media and on the news section of our website. So if you're interested in, in the latest developments in Canadian news, please do read our news articles. We keep them updated. Right. Uh, and obviously, if you're interested in coming to Canada, please go to our website, immigration.ca, and complete our free online assessment. We'll then get back to you with your options. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please please do like it and please follow us on our social media, and we'll obviously keep you up to date up to date on our next live stream. Great. Hopefully, uh, sometime near the end of November, we're we're targeting our next interesting topic. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Right. Well. That's, Great. Yeah, well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks very much, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. See you soon.